And in the bottom box, the Gaza violence continues. And Greg has more on that right now. Yeah, we've been following what's happening in Gaza. Day three of the Israeli uh, military offensive there. They are specifically targeting Hamas locations, including some military headquarters, security compounds, uh, even the Islamic University there, a cultural symbol to be sure uh, for Hamas. Uh, but the rockets continue to be fired from Gaza into civilian territories of Israel, targeting innocent uh, Israeli citizens. Joining us now with more, former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He is now the leader of the Likud party and running for Prime Minister in the upcoming Israeli elections in February. Sir, thank you so much for being with us. If the Hamas rocket attacks continue, and there have been several more today, would you then urge a ground invasion of Gaza? Well, I would support the government in taking whatever action is required to stop these uh, missile threats. Uh, you're talking to me from uh, New York. Imagine that you have uh, a warning in New York of an impending missile attack. You have 30 seconds, 30 seconds to find cover. Now imagine that this uh, warning happens every day, that missiles are fired every day, week on, month after month, year after year, for eight years. I think you would uh, expect the government to take action. Israel waited a very long time, uh, but it's taken action now, and we all support it. Uh, coalition, opposition, we're united as a people to, uh, to roll back this terror threat against hundreds of thousands of our, of our people. I spoke with uh, Defense Minister Ehud Barak a couple of days ago, uh, obviously one of your uh, political opponents for the prime minister in the upcoming election. He told me that Israel, and I'm quoting here, cannot accept a ceasefire agreement with Hamas. Do you agree? I think we have to stop the uh, missile firing, that's for sure. But we also have to remove the, uh, the uh, future threat of such missiles, because what happened last time is we ostensibly had a ceasefire. Hamas used it to uh, smuggle in more weapons, such as the ones that were just fired into Ashkelon and killed some people, killed one person and wounded and maimed others uh, and terrorized in another city. So uh, I think that long term, we're going to have to do something to remove this Iranian uh, Hamas terrorist base uh, at the doorstep of Tel Aviv and our major cities. What does that mean long term? Does that mean reoccupying Gaza? Is that a possible goal? I don't think anyone wants to reoccupy Gaza or anyone wants to be in Gaza. What we want is to have peaceable neighbors. I mean, we vacated every last inch of Gaza. Uh, it was promised that uh, we would not have any rockets fired at us uh, or any terrorist uh, attacks from Gaza. But in fact, the opposite has happened. We went out. Hamas, with Iranian support, came in. Uh, they took over the place. They turned it into one huge missile base that is firing rockets indiscriminately into our cities. They're targeting civilians deliberately while they're hiding behind civilians. So they're committing a double war crime. Attacking civilians is a war crime, uh, and hiding behind civilians is right. a war crime. Indeed. Uh, we're faced with a very, very tough enemy here, and we have to take action, as would the United States, as would any country faced with such a threat. In fact, Hamas has fired more than 6,000 rockets into Israel over the last three years. They violated the ceasefire, refused to extend it. Then they escalated the rocket attacks on innocent Israeli civilians at the end of it. Uh, but look, I need to present their side. They're not here. They say it was justified because of uh, Israel's travel restrictions, which are pretty strict in and out of Gaza. So what's your response to their claim? Well, I think that's ridiculous. I mean, they can move in and out, but if you're a terrorist, you want to check it, and we do. Uh, and we certainly don't want them to uh, smuggle weapons uh, into Gaza, as they've been doing um, wholesale. Uh, I think to say that you can launch thousands of missile attacks against innocent civilians deliberately targeting schools, children, buses, supermarkets. Come on. That, that, that's ridiculous. Now, Israel, in response, is trying to ferret out with surgical precision strikes. It's trying to ferret out the uh, launchers of these attacks, the, right. the labs, the people who put this together, who ship these missiles. And regrettably, there are some civilian casualties. But the overwhelming amount of those that we've targeted are Hamas fighters, Hamas personnel. And this is something that I think Americans understand instinctively. You just don't allow these terrorists who sure. are uh, fueled and motivated by 
uh, radical Islam to wipe away Israel. Well, it's important that they understand that the people of Israel stand together to roll back this threat. And may I say, I think all decent people everywhere, the entire international community should back Israel in this just action, this just action of self-defense. Many do. But there are some who are accusing uh, Israel, uh, and the United Nations is certainly among them, of disproportionate response to the rocket attacks. Um, it's true, though, isn't it, and I think you've been hinting at it in our conversation, that the uh, high Palestinian casualties is due in large part because Hamas deliberately locates its weapons and its terrorists in residential neighborhoods and indeed close to schools, essentially using women and children as shields. How do you combat that? Well, you try to minimize it by targeting as precisely as you can the actual operatives. But sometimes there are accidental civilian casualties of war, and that's tragic. And we're sorry every time a civilian uh, or a bystander gets hurt. Mm -hmm. The difference between us and them is that they're happy when civilians are hit. They'll be happy if these uh, rockets fall into a a school, if they uh, kill children, if right. they kill innocent people, they celebrate. They celebrate uh, and I think the blood that's the of entire martyrs. difference between. They celebrate, I think, carnage. They celebrate slaughter. They celebrate uh, uh, the blood of innocents. They don't draw any line between combatants and non-combatants for a very simple reason. They're terrorists. That's what terrorists do. They kill innocent people systematically, not accidentally. Uh, and I think this is the entire difference. But. Uh, even more so, I think that uh, people have to ask themselves, Gee, what would I do in New York City or in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or in, in Florida, or anywhere else in the United States, if you're in, in your hometown, you had 6,000 rockets, several thousand rockets falling yeah. on your head. What would you ask the American government to do? Well, President-elect Barack Obama was in Sderod, the town most badly hit by the rockets of Hamas. Right. It was there a few months ago. And he said, you know, if my two daughters were sleeping in a house, rocketed by these people, I would do everything in my power to prevent this. And indeed, this is exactly what Israel is doing today. It's doing everything in its power. Actually, it's not using even a fraction of its power, because if we wanted to target civilians, we could, we could do a lot of damage. And of course, we're not. We're targeting the uh, operatives. The Israeli right. army is doing what any normal self-defense force would do. Benjamin Netanyahu, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.